Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Categorically Romance podcast. My name is Bree, and today I am joined by Mills and Boone medical editor Lori Johnson. Lori, thank you so much for joining me today. Tell our listeners a little bit about yourself. (laughs) <laughs> Thanks for having me. Um, so yeah, I'm Laurie. I am an editor at Holoca Mills and Boone and have been for, oh gosh, over 10 years now. Um, I, I work um, on the medical romance team, but I also acquire for all the UK series, which includes um, Presents Modern and Romance, uh, which is True Love in the UK, and what else do we do? Historicals as well. Um, so I get to work across those lines, which is fantastic. I love the variety. Oh, uh, you do yeah. have a variety then. I do. <laughs> yeah. It's really good. You get to read all different romances um, and just the different styles and the different lines, they all have something special about them. Um, so yeah, it's it's good. It's definitely good to have that variety. And as I say, I'm really excited to talk to you about medicals today. I'm very, yeah. really looking forward to the upcoming blitz that we've got. Yes, I'm so excited to hear more about the Blitz. But like first, since we have you here, like we love editors. So I have to know, how did you become a romance reader? Like, let's start there first. And then I have to hear your editor journey to like working at Harlequin Mills and Moon. Okay. Um, okay. My journey reading ro- from reading romance was started probably back when I was 12. And I actually um, pinched one of my nan's Mills and Boons and secreted it away. She never knew that I started <laughs> all her book <laughs> her books because I used to go and pilfer this box that she kept um and I just I just fell in love with them and so I've been reading them since I was 12 um and yeah kind of I went to university and I did creative writing there and then after a few years dabbling in journalism which I hated uh I decided what I really wanted to do is work on fiction books and I the, the only place I really wanted to go was Mills and Boone so I applied to be an intern and I essentially nagged my way in (laughs) because they're very, I I already had a job and I had a mortgage and I was making a really big change, but they were kind of like, how are you going to fit this in? I was like, I will make it work. Yeah. Uh, So uh, yeah, and that's where it started. And I've never looked back since. I love it. Um, It's, I've I've had a couple of times where I've been away to do something else. I got the opportunity to uh, live abroad. So I I did that instead. Um, But then I've always come back to Mills and Boone and I'm, I'm back again and yeah it's just brilliant so my my journey with Mills and Boone has been mm-hmm. a very long one started back when yes. I was 12. <laughs> Do you remember anything about that first one like <gasps> your 12 year old brain being like oh my god I want to read more of this. I'm um, assuming it was it a presents? Uh, do you know what? I really can't remember, but I do remember there was a sex scene in it and I definitely flicked <laughs> forward to it. <laughs> I was very curious. <laughs> it was possibly a present. Do you know, I think back at that time, um, the UK series weren't actually branched out into individual genres. Um, so I think it, you just got a Mills and Boone romance and it's only later that they actually separated them out into the, into the different series. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> that is so cool. How did, like, tell us the process of, like, did you start working on one line specifically? Like, how did you get to work on presents and romance and historical and medical? Um, so when you join the, the the London office um, works slightly differently to our North American colleagues um, and we actually work across all the series so when you join you kind of you join as an editorial assistant and you tend to become most of the ad- admin but you're always working on the books you're usually shadowing the other editors um, so you, again just so you've got the, you can gain that experience and have that variety and know what each line entails you work across all of them just from the get-go um, which I really really enjoyed and that was just it it took you straight in but it also gives you so you know what is going on in in each each of those lines and so you can answer any questions that come your way or pick up where where somebody needs so yeah you get to you get to work across all of them from the start in in this office so cool (laughs) that is so cool that is talk about a variety (laughs) it is it's good I feel like sometimes I feel like with presents and and true love or modern and true love Mm -hmm. there's they're so similar but they're also very different (laughs) So I don't know. <laughs> the variety part is like those two, they can feel almost like cousins in a way. Mm-hmm. They kind of are. And um, they, th- I mean, there are real defining qualities to each one presents is 
very, very high fantasy. Um, you know, you're talking real extremes of wealth and um, the the fantasies of what each character goes through, um, you know, the kind of the tropes that are there, whereas romance is much more, it's probably on that more emotional side and the characters can be a little bit more real and relatable. Um but yeah, they still they still feature quite a few of the same thing. You know, you've all, you've usually always got a billionaire or at least a very wealthy um, protagonist, and then y- there's always that because that is what a lot of, most readers want to, is that escapism. They want to be taken away um, to an exotic location and just actually it's a step outside of your of your day life, um, which most people want. So while they do overlap on some things, I think in tone as well they're very different. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Presents is like, it's kind of a serious read where romance, <laughs> true love doesn't, it can be really emotional and very, obviously, they're very like character driven, but yeah. they can be really fun. You know, you have like Rachel really Stewart fun. and Sophie Pembroke. Like they just yes. make them so fun. <laughs> She's kind of our rom- rom-com driver at the moment. She's um, She brings that element to the line, which is, as you say, so fun. Um, and it, it's, it, again, it's another thing that kind of steps away from Presents. Um, yeah, so it, yeah, there's the, I think the, the romance writers can probably have a little more pl- of a play with their storylines and what they want to do and what they want to throw at their characters. Yes, yes. Well, okay, so May is coming up. And we're having, (laughs) we're having some, some special, some special things are happening in May. So (laughs) tell us all about the Blitz. Okay. So in May, we are basically doing a takeover of the month and we are dubbing it um, Medicals Month. And we are running a Blitz to find a new author for the series or maybe more. Um, We're really excited. We are looking for new voices um, and new talent. And it'd just be good to see something fresh brought to the line. So we are opening our inbox for submissions on the 1st of May. That will then close on the 12th. And then from then to the end of the month, the 31st, um, the editors, the rest of the editors and I in the office will be reading the the submissions and we'll be contacting, we'll be getting back to every single one with feedback. So it will be it will be targeted feedback it will be specifically about that um, that chapter that comes through and even if it is a this isn't going to work we'll give you a reason why so there'll be there'll be good feedback for the the authors there or it'll be a actually this is great can we see some more um so hopefully it will be useful across the board uh we are actually asking for a, a first chapter so it doesn't have to be a full partial it doesn't have to be a full manuscript so you don't have to have written the full manuscript yet just a first chapter would be great a short synopsis and a cover letter just to give us a little bit of info about um yourselves and yeah so it's there's we've started this we launched this at the beginning of march so that's two months we're hoping someone can you know bash out a chapter by then and send us send us what they've got uh romance medical romance is predominantly set in the medical world and so your hero and heroine or any you, that's the other thing we are going across the board so it could be your hero and heroine or your hero and hero um they have to be they have to work in a medical capacity in some way shape or form and preferably together because that allows the author to create that sense of place mm-hmm. and build that medical setting for the reader so that is very that is very much integral other than that it's actually completely open and a lot of the tropes are very similar to what you see in presents and uh, romance uh, maybe not historical <laughs> so some of them overlap mm-hmm. but uh yes yeah so it's it's not too it's not too dissimilar but it does need to be set firmly in that medical world but yeah we're really really excited and we're hoping we get plenty of submissions so they like the writer can submit the first chapter yes. and that may be all they have are you all gonna like help them develop the story more or like where does the process kind of go from there so if we want to see more um, and they say, I haven't written it yet, then probably what we'll say is, okay, can you send me the first couple of chapters, which will be, we usually ask for a partial. So the first three chapters is great. And then if it's something that we're really particularly excited about, we'll we'll keep an eye on that and, and continue to, to work with the author. We will definitely nurture that voice. Um, so it doesn't have to be a, okay, now go away and write 50,000 words in, mm-hmm. in two weeks. It's not going to be that at all. It'll be a process. Um, and what we're looking, what we're looking out for more than anything, 
finding is that voice. Um, so it's it's trying to find those authors who fit the line. Um, you, you know, I'm not really bothered about it. the spelling doesn't have to be perfect <laughs> and things <laughs> like that. It just the story has to be right for the line. The voice has to fit. Um, and we want to see yeah fresh takes on um, classic themes and and things like that. So May 1st through the 12th, I feel like mm-hmm. that's, and talking about it now, I feel like that gives us plenty of time, people, to write out a first <laughs> chapter. Like, how long, can you tell us, like, how long is the typical first chapter? Does it depend? It doesn't, like, I've, I've read yeah. some books where it feels like maybe they're mm-hmm. a little bit longer mm-hmm. in one book versus the other. But, like, can you talk, you know, page length, pay, page count and all of that, like what they should be kind of keeping in the back of their mind if they're I, submitting to this specifically. Yeah. I mean, I can give a very rough guide, um, but it does, it will totally depend on the situation that the characters are in and okay. what is needed. So I, I tend to give a rough guide of around four to 5,000 words a chapter chapter but that is very that is just a guide if your chapter goes up to six or it's three that really doesn't matter um it's just that's just a guide to say right okay you've got fifty thousand words to tell this story which is is the word count for this series um fifty thousand words and you know roughly here's how you can break it down it's that's not a it's not a definite it can change that's fine but that first chapter, yeah, if you if it's you've got something important to say, uh, for example, if you're chucking the reader in with a really intense medical scene, you might need more words to play with before you then introduce the protagonists. So mm-hmm. that might be a slightly longer chapter or you might it might just be like, here's the introduction. Here's what the, the heroine is going through or, you know, and it's it's just that in, initial meeting with her and dragging the reader in on her journey so that could potentially be a shorter chapter Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. well I'm like really excited and hopeful because I feel like and Erin tell me if you think I'm wrong on this but like I feel like in North America I don't think people really realize that there even is a medical line because we don't see (laughs) it in the stores and I think people forget to get on the websites yeah so and and I think that people maybe have this misconception that it's like super heavy on the medical, which it's not. No. So can you kind of talk about maybe like the balance of like, obviously they are medical professionals and we mm-hmm. do it there. So much of it is kind of like workplace romance, right? Like the, it's yes. kind of the vehicle that drives them together, yeah. but like balancing, like don't overdo it on the medical, keep the <laughs> romance at the core of the story. I mean, that is very much it. You've kind of hit it on the head. It is a shame that it isn't. I mean, it doesn't, it's not out in retail in North America. And that is a shame. Um, And if anyone's listening who's interested, please go on the website and download these stories. They are fantastic. Um, But no, it's not. I mean, it's not graphic. Uh, There might be the odd scene that gets your pulse racing as you're like, oh, I really hope they're okay. Um, But there's, it's not. It's not like sitting and watching a full um, Grey's Anatomy where you see all the blood and guts and gore or anything like that at all. The, as you say, the the workplace um, drama that's there is used to drive the couple. Um, so it, the heart of it is definitely their romance, and it's all about them and their relationship and their emotional journey. It's the internal conflicts that they have and that they overcome to be together at the end. So while yes, there are medical scenes interspersed with it and a lot of the time their conflict can be linked to their role as well um the the medical is it doesn't dominate at the very at the end of the day these are romances and Mm -hmm. yeah that's that's what you're going to get whenever you read one (laughs) they just so happen to work in the hospital (laughs) they do a hospital or a clinic or a vet's practice we have a lot of pups um, yes. you know, we we do we do vets as well. Um, but yeah, it's basically these these characters are caring, healing characters, and it's just their lives in and around, in and around what they do. Um, and the, I mean, our, our authors do a lot of research sometimes to um, infuse some of the latest technologies and everything through their stories. Uh, I'm I'm always amazed at how much research some of them do. So others know it. Others are actually medical professionals themselves and just they. They do what they know and they write it so well and so authentically. And others just have a genuine grasp for it already. And so it's like, okay, or they 
I, I know a few who are married to medical professionals, then they're just like, oh, I just quizzed my husband. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's, you know, the, it's, it doesn't dominate the stories, but it is there. And the drama that comes through sometimes is just, you, you definitely, your heart starts racing when they're in a bit of it, especially if it's um, an emergency scene or something like that. Yeah. Um, but then just, just as enjoyable are those cozy practices, especially like in a little a UK village, um, because I think the the depth of emotion that's there is usually a little bit another there's a whole other layer because you've got people characters who are sort of trapped together in this little village with the gossip mill around them yeah. <laughs> and things like that. So the the medicine can go around the world. It's not it's not specific to one place and it's yeah, it's not too heavy. It does need to be there. It's it's important that it's there. Yeah. But it doesn't dominate. I think what's interesting to me and like when we first had author Juliet Highland on, yeah. she said, um, if you enjoy small town romance, you'll enjoy these. And I think mm-hmm. like regardless of where what beautiful location they are set in, they yeah. do have that small town feel because you are in like, you know, either a hospital or they're like it's on site somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. It's a real community feel to each and every book. And I think that's because medical professionals are a community. Um, they they tend to band to, together because they have to. They have to work with so many. There isn't just one person who saves one life. You know, they're, they're a team. Um, and that goes for wherever the set is, setting is. Um, so, yeah, that, that community feels. I can see exactly what she means there. Um, that community feels there in probably in every single book. Yeah. Aaron, do you have anything? I just I'm excited that it's a it's a one chapter uh, pitch sort of blitz. That's that's really that's really cool. Um, just with a lot of the uh, blitzes, it seems in the last year or so, it's it's full manuscript pitches. So um, yeah, just seeing it, it just gives so many people uh, a chance, and you know that's a very achievable goal to to get to. Yeah. Yes. Which is what the, for for us too, because we have to read them. You do <laughs> <We> <laughs> and feedback provide feedback. Quickly. Yeah, um, I think this is something we've learned over the years as we've done um, our blitzes to find new authors. Is that there there were times when it was um, three chapters or more, and it's it's a lot of work the other side as well to make sure you provide feedback for every single one. And we want to do that because we do want to encourage. Although one may not fit for whatever reason, if we see a voice that we like, we will always encourage to try again. Um, so one chapter I think works for whoever's submitting as well as ourselves. Um, and the other thing is because we do these things so quickly as well, and we're trying to stay on them so we can actually buy them at the right time. Um, we need to give you time to write it and a full manuscript takes time. (laughs) So yeah, one chapter is the other thing as well is we can usually tell very very quickly um you know whether it's going to work or not whether the voice fits for the series or whether it's the right tone so one chapter is a, is a good way to get to gauge whether it's it should be actually can you send it we need to say a little bit more or um this isn't quite working because of this or mm, maybe try something completely different but yeah one, one chapter gives us a good good idea um yeah, yeah that that, that works <laughs> Well, has there been any, like, is there anything that you are like hopeful comes across your desk or something you read recently that really excited you that you're like, I'd love to see more of this? I mean, I feel like we get a lot in the medical world, but like, is there anything medical you haven't seen yet that you'd be open to? Like, what are you just kind of excited to see potentially? (sighs) Uh, um, as you say the the medical world is so vast and there's always new things coming through there's always new technologies and new advancements um so i'd be happy to see anything that features like real cutting edge um medicine that would be that would be really interesting um the other thing is i also love the classics um you you really can't be a sort of brooding surgeon (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> um, or I uh, say my my love at the minute is the vets um the vets books I absolutely adore them I'm a, I'm a pet owner myself and so whenever there's like a cute puppy or a kitten or something being saved I'm just like oh <laughs> I love it um but we're seeing a lot of different things coming through now we're seeing a lot of um older characters which is really great and I'm seeing readers feedback that they love reading those because it's representative of themselves um so that is something to definitely not shy away from you know that 
the the characters, the protagonists don't have to be twenty something anymore. Especially in this series, medicals um, naturally lends itself to older characters because it takes so much training to become the best. Um, medical profession you can you know they're they're doing this for years um so we are starting to see those old characters coming through which is great um exotic locations are fab because they i think they allow the authors to have a little bit of fun um and to see what situations they can get the characters in um that's something a little bit different to home um which is really really great yeah I just want to see everything. <laughs> I want to see what everyone sends through. I'm really excited. But I would say I just wouldn't wouldn't discount those classic themes. I would just try and look at them a different way, maybe, and bring different characters, different characters and different cultures um, to them. We're very we want our readers to see themselves in our stories. So we're looking for a bit of everything. <laughs> Romance is for, it's for everyone. So we do want to see um, characters of different ethnicities and, and authors as well. Um, we are definitely looking for LGBTQ plus uh, characters. We've got our first one coming out in June this year, which we're really excited about. That's by Anne McIntosh. She's written a female female. Um, oh, gosh. And- she told us that she was <laughs> writing that, Erin, remember? It's great, yeah. <laughs> it's coming. It'll be out in June. It's fab. And it's got such a beautiful cover. Um, it'll be, yeah, it's really fun. Um, yeah, we're trying to trying to get as much variety as we can um, in the line. So, so yeah, but that's the other thing. Have fun with it. Um, I, medicine doesn't have to be depressing. It can be, I mean, you're talking about people saving lives, which is a good thing. Um, so definitely, yeah, if, you, if you're going to write it, ha- have a little bit of fun. Um, because I, I know a lot of medics personally, and they, they try and make sure they balance quite a hard job um, with fun as much yeah. as they can. Yeah. Well, I just have to say like two authors that we, we follow that have gotten picked up. I know Denise and Wheatley have to yes. like shout her out. And then Christine <laughs> Lynn. And I think that yes. they posted like they're going to do a continuity together. And I'm like, they I are. can't wait for this. <laughs> they are. So Denise, I think, is publishing her debut in January next year. And Christine's out uh, at later, the second half of this year. And yeah, ne- when we were planning for next year, it was like, actually, this might be a really good opportunity to give two, two brand new authors um a little boost actually and see if they want to they want to have a go at working together um a lot of our authors do um duets or we we tend to do two continuities a year so yeah we thought that might be a good um duet for them to do so really looking forward to seeing that that'll be really fun super (laughs) excited Uh, i cannot wait for that well where can everyone like keep up with you online and like where where do we submit where do the listeners submit their information you can submit to Submittable. There will be an inbox um, on there that is for the medical blitz, blitz and it will be very clearly marked. Um, if you go to, if you're able to go to the Harlequin, um, uh, right for Harlequin website, there's a link on there that has a blog post that has all the information on as well. And I can always send the links across to you guys so you can share it. Um, I'm also on Twitter. So are the rest of the medical team. And um, our details are on the end of that blog too. Uh, if you have any questions, just drop us a message whether that's through Write for Harlequin or um, yeah, to our Twitter and we'll do our best. To, I will admit I'm not great with my Twitter. It's, <laughs> I'm, more of, I'm more of an Instagram person. Um, but yeah, I, uh, it, I do have uh, notifications on my phone so I can, I can always get back to any questions. Um, we were hoping to do a and a at some point, but uh, at the moment, everyone's trying to use up their annual leave. <laughs> So we're all we're all scrabbling to use up our days so we'll be back full time in april uh, <laughs> and hopefully we'll be able to do a little q and a before um before the launch at the beginning of may yes okay well yeah. listeners make sure you check the show notes we will have all of the links we will get information from Lori and make sure that we yes. put everything down there so that you can find it as well through yes. here uh and Lori, i mean you you have to come back you're going to be editing more books we have a podcast <laughs> just saying so <laughs> I'm happy to come back anytime. Um, I, I love the show. It's really good fun. Um, I love that you've spoken to Julia. Actually, she's my author and I just, she's fantastic. I really love working with her she's and her great. stories are so good. 
she's yeah she's really hit her stride with medical she knows exactly what she's doing they're so fun and so emotional she's she's um yeah she's yeah she's fantastic so I read one of hers for her our, our books club I read her her debut actually and I was like I can't uh, believe this was her debut it was so good it it read like she had been re- like writing for medical for like 10 yeah. years I'm like what? she gets it <laughs> yeah yeah she gets it really well I was surprised she doesn't she's not in a medical background um but yeah no she she managed she pulls that through so well and so authentically um i think one of her books is it coming out this year uh i'm going back to the vets again uh she she did one where she basically featured every pet she'd owned and i just thought it was so cute it was adorable and but really sweet and so personal it was a really nice touch to feature um yeah. <laughs> well, listeners, if you're looking for a starting point, I mean, just saying, Juliet. Juliet <laughs> no Highland. Out. But there are so many authors so in, many. in this series who are just, uh, I mean, we have a lot of crossover with romance. There are actually quite a few who write for romance as well. Um, so if you see their name popping up twice, that's why. Some um, also write for presents. So you've got people like um, Carol Marinelli, ne- Mel Marinelli uh, does both. Um, and Sharon Kendrick used to write for medicals a long time ago um but yeah there's so many great authors in there and so many fabulous stories to tell um yeah it's it's a really really good series a really fun series and really enjoyable everyone you walk away from with a a sense of it's just always uplifting no matter what topic it's tackled yeah they are they are just lovely beautiful stories too and so enjoyable they are like we talked a little bit about escape earlier like they are their own different kind of escape yes yes they are very much yeah you would think actually medical you would think oh it's too realistic and too heavy and they're really not I say they can really be quite uplifting they can be very emotional um Kate Hardy really um hit me in the chest just before Christmas with a, a vet and again another vet story um and I was sobbing by the time I got to the end of a particular <laughs> scene um she they are that some of them will deal with those deeper issues um but you come away at the end of it just feeling like you've been wrapped in a warm hug. They're great. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's how I felt with uh, when Amy Andrews came back with hers. <laughs> yes. <laughs> a- Amy Andrews is phenomenal. Uh, uh, just the, the connection she can get between her characters are just amazing. <laughs> She's very, very good. Um, at, th- at that just, yeah, that intensity between them. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> 